Hello, friends. Mike Adams here with First Person Audio. Hey, I've noticed something kind of glitchy going on with Audacity and the audio clip names that are present there when you've got sync lock tracks turned on. I'm having a bit of a problem with it, and I wanted to show it to you and let you see what's going on, and then maybe you can look into it further too and let me know what you find. So let's talk about it right now. In the screen that I've got open here before us, I've got some tracks in here just to illustrate what I want to show you. First of all, I want to talk about the uh, labels before we get much further. You know, I've always used label overlays in my projects. These are these blue oval shaped uh, labels that are on here. I've always used those because in the past that kept the label name on the track. Let me show you where I set that in case you're not aware of it. Let's go up to Audacity and then Preferences. And then you see right here to second click down, it says show track name as overlay. That's how I get the track name to appear on the track. If I turn that off, let me unclick that and click OK. And you'll see that those, uh, those oval shaped labels that I have on the track disappear. The reason that I turned that on is because let's come to this middle track here for just a moment. When I go to name this track, if I give it a long name, something more descriptive, it doesn't show up. The whole name doesn't show up up in that little dialogue where the drop down window is. So if I'm putting on a longer name on the track, I want to know what that track name is. So I always use label overlays or track overlays on my labels whenever I am uh, doing a project. So I'm gonna cancel out of here and I'm gonna go back in the preferences and I'm going to re-enable that for us. And I'm gonna tell it to show track name as overlay. And that way I always have the track name again on the track. And so as the track is scrolling, let's say this was playing, I always have the name on the track. Let me move this back. Well, the problem that I've noticed starting in version 3.1 is that now we have names on the audio clips themselves. If I import a piece of audio into Audacity, it takes the file name of that audio and puts it up in this little track name header here and keeps it there. Well, that makes my desktop or that makes my interface here look pretty cluttered. I've got, you know, duplicate tracks. They might say something different, like in this one, I have the original track at the top, I have my working track, the next one down, and then I have an intro track down at the bottom. These aren't in any particular order and they're not related to each other. Again, it's just a project that I opened up to, to illustrate this to you. And so I've thought about, you know, not having those tracks as overlays anymore because it's just kind of cluttered. But then I realized if I've got a short track, like on this bottom track here, I've got two audio clips. And if I've got a short clip of audio here, and I'm playing along and that clip disappears, I don't know what that track is anymore. Right now I've got the overlay on it, it says intro, so I know it's the intro, but if I have a short audio clip in that track and I'm playing the track and all of a sudden the, you know, the audio clip is off of the screen, the name goes with it. I don't know what that name is. So I think I'm gonna keep those overlays on, at least for the time being, even though like in a longer track with the two tracks up above here at the top, you know, these are longer tracks and that name is going to stay there for the, you know, for the duration of that audio clip. But I think I'm going to leave those overlays on there, even though it looks kind of funny. Um, you know, I want to know what my tracks are with the names that I give them, not necessarily the file name. Now, if you record a track, what it puts in that audio clip is whatever you've got set as the default for your newly recorded track. Let me show you what I mean. Back up to the preferences window for just a moment. And you'll notice once this window opens that I've got the default audio track name set to audio track. Now I can change that. That's how it comes by default. I can put whatever I want to put in there. So if I've got a new track, whatever I've decided to name a new track is going to show up in the audio clip as the name for that new track. And again, if I import a piece of audio into it, it takes the file name of the audio and puts it in the uh, audio clip for the name. So I'm going to cancel out of here again. And let's put this thing right back to the beginning so we can see all of our tracks. So again, even though it looks a little bit cluttered, I think I'm gonna leave the label overlay on there, but I wanted to show it to you. I wanted you to see it. I don't know if you use overlays as well. I do, I use them all the time. But here's a bug that I think I found in Audacity concerning the clip name when sync lock tracks is enabled. 
I mentioned a video or two ago that I always use sync lock tracks. Whenever I'm doing a, pro a podcast, I'm using sync lock tracks. I don't use sync lock tracks if I'm doing something for ACX because typically that's just one track and so there's no reason to sync the track to itself. But if I'm doing a podcast and even on some videos, if I've got more than one speaker or more than one person speaking in a video, I might use sync lock tracks. But all of my podcasts are always with sync lock tracks. Well, a problem that I've discovered is when I turn on sync lock tracks, I can't manipulate the clip name itself. In fact, I can't manipulate the clip name right now and I don't have sync lock tracks turned on yet. So if I come, let's come here to Rosie and let's talk about this clip right here. If I double click in the header of that thing, it brings up the name, brings up a dialog box. It says, hey, do you want to rename this? Well, I can rename it. I can, you know, let's just change this to a two. And I can tell it to OK, and everything looks good, but it didn't change the name. Likewise, if I come back down and I double click that again, and it brings up that dialog box, if I completely delete the name, if I just don't want it in there, and I click OK, it doesn't delete the name. Now, I'm on a MacBook Pro, a 2017 MacBook Pro, and I'm running OS Monterey, so, you know, it's all up to date as far as my operating system. And I'm running Audacity version 3.1.2 that I've got open right now. Now, I've tried this on 3.0.5, and I've tried it on 3.1.3 beta 1, which is out in beta version right now, and I get the same results. And it doesn't seem to matter which audio clip that I'm wanting to delete the name because I'm thinking, okay, I've got track overlays. If I could delete those names, that would be perfect because that gets rid of the clutter. Then I've only got one track name per track, which is like it used to be prior to version 3.1. But again, if I try to delete this name and I tell it OK, it doesn't delete the name. Now here's where things get pretty dicey. If I come up to my tracks drop down menu and I turn on sync lock tracks, and from there I come to any one of these audio clips, let's pick on this one now, and it brings up the dialog box and says, OK, what do you want to do? Do you want to rename it? Do you want to delete it? What do you want to do right now? Well, a problem right now with this sitting the way it is, it doesn't matter what I do, Audacity is going to crash on me. So let's say I changed my mind. I don't want to do anything right now. Sorry, Audacity. That was my, my, my mistake. So I'm going to come down here and just hit cancel. And when I cancel, Audacity is going to crash. And boom, just like that, it crashes. It wants me to send in a report. I've sent in several of these, so I'm not going to send this one in. I'm going to tell it don't send. And if I come back down here to version 3.1.2, by the way, here's 3.05 and here's 3.1.3 beta 1. If I come here to 3.1.2 and I restart it, it recovers that file nicely. That part of it's working great. It comes up and says, hey, you didn't close this the right way. You want to recover it? I'm telling it yes. Let's recover it. And there's my file back. But again, with sync log tracks enabled, anytime I open up a dialog box, as soon as I get to this point, it doesn't matter what I do. Audacity is going to crash. At least that's how it's working on my system. So if I delete this name this time and I tell it OK, then Audacity crashed again. No, I'm not going to send that. I don't want to do that right now. I'm going to reopen Audacity. And once Audacity reopens, I'm going to recover that selected file. And it does a nice job recovering it. But that's what I found so far. Now, I'm on a Mac. And I don't have access to a Windows computer. So if you're on Windows and you're running Audacity and you've got version 3.1.2, or let's say, let's say 3.1.0 or higher, and you want to try this for me on your Windows machine, then please do. Do kind of a, a similar scenario. Turn on sync lock tracks and try and change those names and leave a comment below about what happened. Because again, I don't know if this is just related to the Mac or if it's a bigger problem that's on Windows as well when sync lock tracks is enabled. So I just wanted to show you that. I wanted to show you how the labels look now. I wanted to show you how to get to the label overlay if that's something that you want to use. And once this gets sorted out and straightened out and I can delete these clip names, then it's gonna clean up my user interface considerably and I'll just have one overlay on each track. So I'll let you go for now. I just wanted to throw that out there and tell you what I found concerning sync lock tracks and these clip names and the inability for me to change them on the Mac operating system. And yes, I've reported this to Audacity. I've sent in a bunch of those reports that come up as well every time it crashes. So they're aware of it. I'm sure they're working on it. 
but I wanted to make sure that you're aware of it too. Hey, thanks for joining me on this video. Remember, I'm online at firstpersonaudio.com. You'll find me there 24-7. And I do also teach Audacity Bootcamp, Beginner to Advanced, which is 60 plus videos designed specifically for podcasters. I also teach ACX audiobook production using Audacity, where I use Audacity exclusively. I don't go outside of Audacity in audiobook production. If you're interested in those, the links are below in the description. Go check them out. And until next time, take care.